Hey guys, just wanted to take a minute and thank you, the listener, for listening and proving you have a growth mindset. Our mission is to curate information from the top influencers around the world. Uh, We provide you with real actionable steps on how to improve in any area of your life, whether you're an entrepreneur, a C-suite executive, or just starting your journey of self-development. The Professional Development Podcast is all about growth, and you know if you're not growing, then you're dying. If you enjoy the content, please help us uh, by liking, sharing, and telling a friend about the content. We enjoy getting together, and uh, here we go. Hey guys, welcome to the Professional Development Podcast. Today is Wednesday, May 26th, and apparently I've got the biggest ego on the podcast. Big ego guy. I mean, Matt Cresco. I think everybody saw that one. So coming. we put a poll out. Rich did. So, uh, Dan just was just dying to put a poll out of who's I, got the I don't biggest. I think it was me. Who's got the biggest ego on the podcast? <laughs> Bullshit, Dan. And he's been talking about this for weeks. And what? apparently, I just won by a fucking landslide. By like it. three or four X. Congratulations. And you then, Joe Biden, the whole world. <laughs> <laughs> then your response I mailed was, in my Yeah, vote. I won. I won. Uh, What's next? Yeah. I guess winners win. What are, what are you going to do, right? That is such an egotistical thing to say. I know. Who, whoever the fuck voted, go fuck yourselves right now. That's all I'm going to say. But they're all girls them. that Matt used to date, I think. Yeah. Uh, there mean, was a couple in there, and I, I called them out on it for sure. Did you send them texts? <laughs> yeah. uh, what else we got going on? Oh, Brad brought up a fun fact. <clears throat> we are officially a top one percenter of podcasts. In the world. In the world. Of We're all podcasts. So prestige. Uh, we won't get into specifics about how there's well over a million active podcasts and we're like 4,000 something, <laughs> but we're just going to continue to say we are a top one percenter in all podcasts in the world. It, exactly. Until that's, that changes. And, and that's not a, you're in the top 4,000. That's folks, pretty good. That's, that's, not not a, a, yeah. that's not a podcast ego thing. That's just no, facts. No. Yeah, it's I mean, big facts. Stats. We love numbers. There's data. Because yep. we will be number one. Mm-hmm. We're just not there yet. I think that yeah. just shows that our listeners are probably one percenters yeah. as well. Uh, yeah. 100%. So. Besides you motherfuckers that voted for me as big as ego. But I digress. I mean, they weren't wrong, I guess. I, I, I actually did not vote for you. I voted for Brad. Yeah, I would have for sure. I didn't vote, but I would have for sure vote? voted for Brad. I have. I just have the most confidence. That's the difference. I would say that's there's confidence there. Yeah, um, yeah, it could be. Well, I guess let's get into it, right? So today's episode is check your ego at the door, or we were thinking about check your ego amigo. I love that I so much. I thought I that was so good. I saw it on Google. I figured, so I didn't. I didn't come up with Somebody it. Somebody already used it. Um, but before we get into what ego is. Um, from because there's a, this stuff goes deep, and Dan was talking about it. This stuff goes way deeper than we expected. We'll touch surface level, but is there anything else that we wanted to touch on? Um, anything going on in business? Anything going on with life? Anything new? Do you got Brad? You been, oh, yeah. Brad's, Brad's been yeah, fucking so, just doing. Yes, yeah, yeah. guys. So I think I think a lot of our listeners love the love the shoot the shit segment. You know where we just bullshit at the beginning. So um, over the weekend, you know, I did one of those things I normally don't do. I took the wife out. You know, it was a little little couples dinner. How'd you pay? I paid with uh, gift cards. Trident layers. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but why wouldn't you? Free use money, gift cards? right, baby? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, a, a conversation came up, and I felt a little awkward because it was how long do you last in bed, right? Mm. <laughs> and I, speaking of ego, the guy over here to my right, Dan, is not an ego. Says thing. he's says he's pumping for an hour. An hour minimum. <laughs> yeah. An hour minimum. <laughs> and. Uh-huh. And we reached out to everybody here, and even even Matt came in well under the hour mark. <laughs> so, Just because Matt's all about himself. So, so uh, yeah. I guess I didn't think he about gets that. in, he does his thing, he gets out. No. Selfish lover. I'm not yeah. a. You know, I'm a giver. Whatever. Okay. Dan. Dan apparently Dan is, a giver. is the ultimate giver. And guys, the only thing I could think about this entire time is like, not to be a jerk, but. Dan's the biggest guy here, and if he's pumping one out for an hour every night, guys, a fucking hour. We've talked. We've talked about this. I'm a fat athlete. Okay, a fat athlete. <laughs> okay, I'm. I if there was like a high body fat percentage Olympics, you'd I would be, be like there. John. You're like I'd John Daly. Fucking, I'd get gold medals. So let me ask you something. The next time, and the next time you do this. Will you toss on a fitness tracker and just see how many fucking you calories? Know, calories uh, it made me really think about it. Okay, and then are you I, just famished oh, afterwards? Wait, dude, I, I got more famished. famished. I have more fire. I have more fire. I, you wait, know, seventy five hour was tough because I couldn't drink a gallon of water except for right after. Right after. <laughs> I would definitely drink a gallon of water. <laughs> no, but what's funny is oh his wife was in this group uh, chat with us. <laughs> 
<laughs> and she goes, Dan, you're so full of shit. Right afterwards, you ordered Chinese food at 9.30 at night. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't say I was full. Oh, no, no. She wasn't saying I was full of shit about... Yeah, but she said after you ordered Chinese food at 9.30. No, that was on something else. Yeah. That was My on. grandma literally just told me that she wants to start listening to her podcast, and now I'm just going to tell her that it's a different <laughs> one. I'm going to be like, oh, we run the Ed Milet show. That's <laughs> us. So, uh, we're producers. Your grandma's a shit, and I said fuck a lot at volleyball, and she didn't care. She, she could said, handle that. Guys are, guys are okay to say fuck and shit. But women, women, right? women That's cannot. That's exactly right. what grandma said. That's, yeah. That's a proper woman That's right. right there. Thanks, Grandma. Bonnie's the best. What do you say we get into the show? Yeah, then, let's do it. And then uh, Dan's still doing his Dan's, research Dan's on saying. what I was saying. What do you have? Because you, we were talking about getting snacks or something. We weren't. Uh, okay. you, you you put like you one Chinese conversation food at nine thirty. We'll have a fact check. I will say that. I did the math a couple nights later, and it wasn't an hour straight. It was like you know whatever. <laughs> what what? You can't just 30, say it's whatever. Two 30 minute sessions. You can just say it's whatever. whatever. Give us whatever. Whatever. We're, give gonna, us. we're gonna leave it at whatever. He's like, it actually ended up being three minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so my wife just, is gonna listen to this. Okay. <laughs> Time goes. And we by. know Brad can fact check right now and tell her. So before we get too it. caught up in our egos and how long people are lasting in bed, let's uh let's get into some by themselves. Let's get into some ego <laughs> quotes. What no. do you guys got? Uh so I I have one from Ryan Holiday. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and jump in first this week. Okay. And so this one, he actually doesn't even realize he, this is like a quote thing, but I was listening to a podcast that we, he was on and he says, toxic ego is when we overestimate our importance. And so I like that one a lot because if we, everybody has an ego, whether it's big, small, whether they think they're the shit or they, you know, they don't think they're the shit at all. Yeah. Um, your, your ego, if you overestimate who you are, I think it, it's toxic. So. Sure. Yeah, I like that. That's yeah. good. And yeah. because I like that one so much, um, I also got one from Ryan Holiday too. <laughs> and it's, uh, you're not as good as you think. You don't have it all figured out. Stay focused. Do better. I love that. Yep. And that was Ryan Holiday? That was Ryan Holiday. Okay. I'll just keep on piggybacking here, so, Cresco. Uh, I had a Ryan Holiday one. I'm not going to roll with that one, though. <laughs> oh, bummer. Uh, well, he's the only one that actually has written a book about, like, ego. Yeah, so, it, which by it's easy to pull quotes from. Him. Ego, the ego is the enemy. is a is a great book. It's been a couple of years, but that was a pretty solid book. Um, so this one is I've learned that I still have a lot to learn, and that's by Maya Angelou. And that one doesn't obviously reference ego, but I think that kind of just gives you a lot of context that ego is understanding that there's always more to learn, and a lot of times your ego is shutting you off to the idea that there is more to learn. And just constantly this idea of you having to defend yourself or be right. So. Yeah, and I actually love that one. Uh, and I was talking to Brad about this before the pod mm -hmm. is ego, you know, it, it can hurt your goals because it creates this false sense of perfection in yourself. Mm -hmm. And so uh, if you think you're that great, you essentially quit giving yourself the ability to learn more because you think you're the shit, right? And so I think that aligns well with your quote. Absolutely. Yeah, that's right on point. So, have, so I don't have one from any of those. I have a Gary V quote. I, I bring a lot of Gary V. Um, his is, I put zero weight into anyone's opinion about me because I know exactly who I am. And uh, it's for him, uh, he's obviously accomplished a fuck ton. He has earned the right to have an ego um, because he's incredibly self-aware. So anything that Gary V does is mostly impressive. And I, I just think that you should just focus on your own shit. And he is the epitome of that. Yeah, I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. And um, Dan, kind of to go off what you were talking about earlier, <clears throat> these are going to be interesting, which are the definitions of ego, because we can all sit here and Google it, but like if you Google it, there's pages upon pages on ego. You know, there's like surface level stuff, and then there's stuff that's really getting into the conscious and subconscious and psychedelics and shrooms and Joshua um, Tree. Yeah, all the. Uh, and Bobby, uh, what's that one drug you tried one time? Oh, DMT. DMT. Yeah, that was yeah. awesome. The God drug. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the yeah. God drug, yeah. yeah. It was pretty um, sweet for about it? 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, any, so, so my buddies were talking about that drug mm -hmm. in a group sex and said like a bunch of people that have been taking it have been seeing these things called the DMT elves. Like they take them. They <laughs> I just never sit, saw any Like elves. a string of people have been seeing L. I got to look more into it. Or uh, we'll, we'll get a fact checker here on that. But to kind of circle back, what's your guys' definition of ego? So I think mine's pretty crude. Um, it's just how someone feels about themselves or what they're capable of. 
So mm -hmm. pretty straight to the point. Yep. And uh, and I talked about this earlier. So it, it's to me, it's a uh, a lot of times a defense mechanism. So it actually, but a defense mechanism that hurts you, right? Uh, because it um, it hurts you in the long run because it keeps you out of touch with reality. Because at the end of the day, it's just shutting you off and just thinking you're right or thinking somebody else is wrong. Whenever I looked up ego, I mean, and I was saying this before we started recording, but everything that you look up on ego is completely negative in terms of, and no one has turned it into a positive. And I mean, just to throw out the definition actually, Evan, I know we weren't doing this, but the definition on dictionary.com is a person's sense of self-esteem or self-importance. So for me, if you are, I mean, I think it's okay to have an ego. I, as far as defining it, that was kind of a tough thing for me to come up with, but I think it's being self-aware of who you are, uh, kind of based off of what Gary Vee had to say as well. So I think it's just knowing who the fuck you are. Uh, one of the quotes that I found said, get yours. And I thought that was pretty fucking Brad right there. It what was, was that? It's just get yours. Yeah. Um, and that, I mean, shoot, I think that's it. Get <laughs> yeah. yours. Yeah. And I mean, mine was very similar. It was perception of self-importance. Um, but also I was trying, and I, we're not going to get into this today because we're, none of us are smarter enough to understand the neuroscience behind ego, but um, was it Freud uh, did a whole study on ego and mm -hmm. it was almost like the the brain and the body are different and the brain uh, creates the ego based on the perception that they see, you know, who that person is. Yeah, so is it, are you talking, yeah, it's like how you think others think you are. Like one of those things? Yeah, yeah, and I'm not going to go much further because yeah. I have a lot more to read. Yeah. Well, like you said, we're going to have Dr. Ellen Reed on next week. We could throw that one her way. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yes, that'll be a good one uh, to talk to her about. We're going to have her on next Tuesday. And uh, and then there's the other side of it, right? Because I think sometimes people can mistake like a toxic ego for self-confidence, right? Like Rich was in here talking and he was like, we were kind of joking around because he was like, I didn't vote, but I saw that. He's like, I immediately knew that Cresco was going to be the one that ended up winning. Everyone was like, why? And he's like, because it seems like he's like, talking the most and he's kind of like organizing organizing things. And although I'm not going to sit here and say I don't have an ego, it's like one of those for the podcast. It's like I've gone to Toastmasters. I've studied public speaking, right? Like I've I body language, vocal tonality. Like I've done enough research and stuff on that to where I am confident in this stuff. Whereas like if I were to go into insurance, it's like I'd look like a fucking idiot, right? Or if I would go to try and touch one of your fabrication machines, like you would lose your hand. I would lose something. <laughs> right. Yes, exactly. So that's my, and then, so I guess that kind of like segues into how do you draw the line between like a toxic ego and just having a good amount of self-worth or self-confidence or however, I, whatever you want to call it. I think it's tricky. Um, you know, personally, I thought, I thought I did have like a huge ego until I really started um, diving into this a little bit more. And I think it's more like ego is, is saying like, it's like, you know, going above what you're actually capable of doing, where if you have that high confidence or self-esteem, what you say you're going to do, you, you end up backing up or you're finding a way to do it. So I think that's kind of where I'm at. And I think in certain situations, um, it depends on where you're at and who you're surrounded with. Like if you're in a group of like-minded people who are trying to elevate themselves and I think you're allowed to have a little bit of a, a big ego because you're going to push each other and you're going to take a little bit of risk outside of your comfort zone, which I think mm -hmm. is important. But if you're in a situation where you're with people who maybe are not as like-minded, you need to be a little bit more self-aware of how you're talking about yourself because they're going to look at you as like, oh, you, this fucking asshole. He just thinks he's the fucking shit. Yes. yes. And you, so. made, you made me kind of think of this. So confidence versus ego. Confidence is built on preparation, right? I prepared for this. Uh, I'm ready for this so I yeah. can be confident in whatever I'm doing where ego might be built on self-perception. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit different. Yeah, and I think Jay Shetty, like just to kind of get into some influencers, Jay Shetty says, ego says I know everything. Self-esteem says I can learn from anyone. Ego drowns curiosity. Self-esteem drives curiosity, right? And then I said right again, fuck. Fuck. Ego compares yourself to others. Self-esteem compares yourself to yourself. I think I really 
liked that piece of his because I think those are the things right there. Like saying you know everything, like, and it's an absolute, and then shutting yourself off. Like, we've all been there. Like, guys, like, we've all have some sort of ego. I'm sure oh, yeah. we've been there where it's like, we've ra- we would rather be right in this scenario than to fix the actual problem. And me and Dan are married. We for sure have an ego. Dan and I do this <laughs> on the regular. Yeah. And like, <clears throat> so for me, and I filter my ego. So I, there's no denying that I have one. And Matt will see it flare up whenever I get into a situation where I'm just like, no, fuck that. I, I You know, I, I'm better than you. <laughs> right. Like, I, I, like, you know, and I try to filter that. And I, I try to portray the ego that I feel I need to be around others so they don't think I have an ego, right? Or they don't think I'm trying to be better than them or whatnot. And so I think that, that it comes out every once in a while. Maybe like, it comes out all the time. But I think that, you know, it's definitely there, but at least I'm self-aware with it, you right. know? And so I don't think it's like this crazy big thing um, because I also know that everyone here has a growth mindset. And so I think you limit your growth mindset if you have an actual overly <laughs> I agree. large ego. It's I think- kind of like whenever uh, I came in here and I was like, did you play golf today, Dan? And he's like, no. He's like, but I haven't shot over a 74 in my last however many rounds. And I'm like, dude, bro, good job. And you're like, no, fuck that. That's terrible. I suck under par. Or I'll give you nucks when I shoot under par regularly. Oh, okay, sounds good. <laughs> so you do have it's a just bit expectations. There. Yeah, but it's expectations of myself. Sure. And maybe that's the self esteem thing versus ego thing, right? Like I expect myself to be here, and then you get people around you who will say like, you think you're better than everyone, and so I think somebody's perception of another person's ego can be based upon where they are in life, right? So if they're struggling and you're talking about winning, you know, they may think you have an ego when in reality, you're just talking about what's going on in your life. And, you know, if you are changing and they're staying the same, you know, maybe they're in your circle and you decide, hey, I want to get like, especially you, Bobby, you know, I want to get sober and I want to grow and be healthier and all these things. Well, the people that you were around before, they're probably like, well, why the fuck are you, doing that and oh you think you're better than us now because you're this different person and so now they see you with an ego even though you might not have the ego if that makes sense yeah totally you know i totally agree and i I just think that's you know auditing your circle and being aware of what's around you and it's an unfortunate deal because like you said like we're all trying to grow but if you are around people like it's almost like you can't be who you want to be Right. Because, like, you have to almost dumb it down for them. Like, and it's almost an audit thing. Like, if you are around those people, should you be around those people that you have to, that I have to portray something who I'm not <laughs> just so that they don't think I'm exactly. an asshole or have an ego or whatever. Yeah. Right? Ego becomes a problem, too, is you see a lot of people who, ego becomes a problem when people become manipulative and they do the things that they say or do certain things to try and get a certain result versus actually just being content with whatever the whatever's going to happen. And that's where, I mean, we keep on saying, like Brad said this, I said this earlier, that self-awareness. And if you can be more self-aware to the point where you don't have to be manipulative in order to get the things that you want, there's no problem with having an ego. It becomes a problem once you start enabling other people or manipulating other people to get what you want. So do you guys have like, and Dan, you kind of tried to, I think you just hit on this on on one example, but do you guys have any specific situations where you know that you've like had an ego about things like looking back on it, like you or something that's recurring or anything that's popped up? Can you guys think of anything that you know you've had an ego with in the past or continue to have an ego about? I think I have an ego daily. Yeah. I mean, I just, I do. Like, I mean, I don't know. I, I think I'm very confident of what I'm doing, where I want to be, where I want to go. And I think there are times that that probably crosses the line. But I also feel like I usually put the work in to back my shit up. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, if I commit to something, I fucking do it. Like, I didn't, dude, I didn't want to come tonight. Yeah, I but, didn't either. I didn't know? either, actually. I was like... So, like, this, but I committed tonight to Tonight might you know? not have happened. If we all, <laughs> yeah. like, 10 minutes. So it's like... <laughs> but we're here, and yeah. then we do it for our listeners. So, yeah, so it's like, I you know... I had to defend myself on the fucking ego poll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I couldn't miss that chance. Yeah. Matt would have been here by himself. <laughs> My ego drove me here. I won, but I don't have an ego. Yeah. Well, well so, so, to your point, Brad, and, you know, this is just... And I'm like, I can be like this as well, and it's one thing that's really hard for me sometimes is the ego <clears throat> kind of... The ego comes out around my perception of 
how people should live based on how I live. And I have to watch myself and audit that all the time because I'm one of those people that'll be like, you should start a business. Like, why haven't you started a business? Working for somebody else is not, it is dumb. You know what I mean? And and that's not the reality because some people just want to barbecue and go to work and have a good life, you know, and, and that's fine. And sometimes I think ego can come out because you think sh- things should be done this one particular way. And when they're not, that's where your ego can can flare up maybe. Yeah. And it's kind of thinking about yourself as opposed to thinking about them, right? Because everybody's got different expectations and standards for themselves. I've kind of realized uh, through talking on this that I'm obviously super structured. And when I do something, I'm a little bit of a perfectionist about it. So my ego tends to get in the way when I do something, like whether it's for the podcast or whether it's for work. And I set out this structure and I take the time to do this. And then people come in and like don't follow through or people come in and try to change things for whatever reason, like people trying to fuck with what I have going on, that's when my ego flares up. And that's when I start to get pissed off about like, but that's my own, but that's my own issue, right? That's my own problem with like, I guess just imperfection or just like breaking the mold of whatever it is that I'm creating. Yeah, and I think it's like a fingerprint like situation, right? Like yeah. we all have flare ups for with our egos from different things. And if you're really good at something, it's, you know... um, and I think Jason Selk talked about this where, you know, you need to be arrogant or you need to be cocky or have that ego. When you're in the game. When you're in the battle, right, yeah. of of what you're really fucking good at um, or, you know, whatever it might be because it can drive you uh, and give you confidence in, in all these things. Like, I think I'm the best. I know I'm the best. I'm going to get up. I'm going to hit a home run, whatever, right? Yeah. Um, but, but when you leave there, you know, check your ego at the door yeah. and that's where we are. I guess and, so. and before you go too far, Dan, I want to jump back to what Matt said about being a perfectionist because I actually have that in my notes is that, that that Matt is a perfectionist. And I think that's something that probably hinders you and like that causes you to have an ego like you're saying. Mm. And it hinders you because you get so like, this has to be fucking perfect. And like action gets delayed, 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 delayed. And then sometimes maybe action doesn't even happen. Oh, Dan and Dan and I have had this conversation like with our business, right? And it's... um I am good at outlining the details, but sometimes I can get into the details too much that it's like, I need to do the fucking action. Yeah. And I also realize that my ego is uh, is how, like, gets in the way of how other people perceive me. Like, I like to be looked at, at like, on a high status, right? So if I'm doing something new, I realize that I'm fucking, like, a lot of times I'm, I'm scared to look dumb. Like, I, that's actually how I got into, like, a little bit of public speaking is because I knew I had to give a best man speech and I had an ex-girlfriend that was there who dumped me and I was like, there's no fucking way I'm going to go into this like looking, <laughs> looking like, like, a an, like an idiot. Thank so God hours, that wasn't me. She would have been like, thank God I of, fucking broke up with that guy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that was me. Man, I'm glad I dumped that guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but that's, you know, I realized it's a, it's a double-edged sword, right? Because it pushed me to do those things. But at the same time, like you said, you hit the nail on the head, Brad. It can limit me limit me from action. And... And I, I, this is weird that it's like this tonight. Usually, the two people who are dressed the absolute fucking worst are me and Dan. Which I'm still pretty bad. I mean, but Dan's looking, I feel like Dan's whenever I come here, tonight. I'm usually wearing like gym clothes. Still got the stain on your Yeah, <laughs> but like, I, I feel like the two of you, like if we could have a guest or something, you guys like have like stuff in the closet that's nice where like, I'm like, fuck. You gotta wear something other than Vans and a black fucking shirt. Like, do I got a new BP Fab yeah, shirt? Like, <laughs> yeah, like, that, that, that BP you know Fab I mean? shirt that your wife made for you that was pretty nice. Yeah, you I know, but it's that. like that shit's hard for me to have. So, like, obviously, I don't have an ego about like my appearance. <laughs> right. Where like you guys you. like have a a higher set for that than probably me and Dan. Like, he's got a he still does have a salsa stain on his shirt. <laughs> well, that just happened right before the pot at dinner. So Right. It's not like it's you an know. old shirt that he just picked up. <laughs> it's needs, a clean shirt. You, I start with a clean shirt pretty much every day. Yeah. And then as the day <laughs> progresses, it gets dirtier. It just, There's a, a stain just happens. It's yeah. Like Breakfast, lunch, dinner, but, no, So, Brad, or Matt, I wanted to, and what you were saying actually brought up a quote that you've said to me before that I like as a as anybody could apply to it because I think it's kind of a litmus test or whatever um, in terms of an ego. And there was a time where you and I had a disagreement, mm-hmm. um, which happens quite often. Sure. Um, and you said, you know, hey, when I want to get defensive, it's usually because the other person 
is right or has valid points. And I wasn't, I'm not saying I was right in that scenario. I'm just saying, I think that's a great test. I'm getting defensive over what somebody else is saying. Is it my ego or are they just fucking crazy and they're wrong? You right. Know I mean? No, I, I agree a hundred percent. And Ed Milet actually talks about that. <clears throat> he says a few key indicators when looking into if it's ego is somebody being defensive, somebody always trying to be right. And the other two outliers are somebody that's gossiping and bullying. Like anybody that's bullying, obviously, it's just a re- if they're pissed off at somebody else for no reason or trying to find weakness, it's a reflection of themselves. And gossip too. Like I think uh, it was um, how to win friends and influence people. They talk about don't criticize, condemn, or complain. It's like when you get involved in gossip, it's more of a reflection of you and it's your ego. It's you're trying to gain either validation or some good feeling off of somebody else's weakness or lack. And that is ego. Right. And so actually Gary Vee had a quote, and I wasn't even going to bring it up tonight because I, I disagree with it, is ego is a sign of insecurity. Okay. So I disagree with that because I think that if your ego is the perception of yourself, then and you have this massive ego and you're perfect and all this shit, I don't think you believe in the insecurity piece unless you're going home and, and it's a front, right? So I disagree with that quote because I don't think it's a sign of insecurity if your brain's not aware that you're acting how you're acting or you, you're not, you know, you're overestimating, you know, who yeah. you are. I, I think actually, Gary V is also, I mean, he realizes he has an ego though because I, I have another quote from him saying, I have as big of an ego as it gets, but I have stunningly a lot of humility considering some of the accomplishments that I've had. So I think even though he says it's a sign of insecurity, I think there's certain moments where it's, it is for certain people because they're doing it because they have shortcomings and they're trying to portray that there's something bigger than who they actually are. So whenever you guys talk about someone who's upset uh, where like you call them out on something and they get defensive and it's probably because that other person's right, that's where that ego being a sign of insecurity comes in versus someone like Gary Vee who's like, I've earned the right to do this and I'm humble about my accomplishments. But yeah, I've done a fuck ton. Yeah, I, I and I, I'm with you, Dan. I completely disagree with that quote because I think somebody who has an ego is probably like the most secure. Like, because I feel like... It's just, almost like a... I mean, if you get to the narcissist level, it's almost a a brain thing. Yeah. Because you literally cannot see anything but the perfection at that level once you're an official narcissist. So a lot of people want to throw around the word you're a narcissist, but a real narcissist based on like me reading like all this neuroscientific studies is like an actual mental disorder. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, to uh, one of the last things I want to talk about to kind of piggyback off what you said, uh, Ryan Holiday said, where ego makes you overestimate your own abilities and worth. Um, it, he finishes that or talks about it in his book as it also makes you underestimate the effort and skills required to hit your goals. So a lot of times people with big egos will come up short on their goals because they're overestimating what it is that they can do because they're so closed off to reality that they actually end up not hitting their goals. Yeah, I, I like that. And it makes me question, you know, do some people who have egos expect things to happen for them or expect things to be handed to them right. because of who they are. Yep. I, I mean, I, yeah, I definitely think that. I mean, I think you see that with a lot of people who come from a really well-to-do family. They they have that ego because their dad did all the work or their mom did all the work and then they just think it's going to be easy. And then when it comes down to it, they, they fucking can't, can't do it. Trust fund babies, man. Yeah. People who inherit companies that have no business inheriting a company. Yeah. There's a pretty high, I wish I had the statistics. Yeah, it's, by the third generation, second generation, third generation is even like, second generation usually maintains, third generation it usually goes under. Yeah. Um, Cool. So we were, you know, admittedly, we were kind of all over the place there, but that's because there's just so much to actually unpack for ego. Uh, Do any of you guys have any closing thoughts on ego before we get into the last pieces? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think that as you dissect ego, as you actually, you know, hop on Google like we do and do our research around ego, you know, while everybody, no, every single human being has an ego to whatever level, right? Whether it's good about themselves or bad, whatever. Um, I think confidence versus ego is totally different. And Matt, like you said, you've done, you've read a lot of books and you've gone, you know, you've 
gone to um, Toastmasters and these things. And so you have confidence coming in here with vocal tonalities and like, you know, these things that I don't even know the definition to you've read about and you've studied. And so that's the preparation part where, you know, and, you know, I, I think that you have more confidence than you have necessarily an ego, even though it's easy to define the way we portray ourselves as an ego. Sometimes I think it's more confidence in certain areas of our lives. So yep. just want to throw that out there. Yeah. And so, um, I do have a, just the tip. It's super short. Uh, but it, <laughs> we know. Yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my fucking God. Yeah, we totally. Tee that, tee that shit right up. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> It is embarrassingly short. So. <laughs> so that's where the ego part came in with all those. Extra, hey, Brad extra said you want to do the pod without the pants, and Matt would not. Do it didn't it. even respond. I, I'll scared. take my fucking pants off right now. Who's, oh. You guys want to take them off? <laughs> oh my <laughs> god! There we go. Where's, that wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> yep. Here you we're go. all actually naked right now. So uh, if you're watching on YouTube, I apologize. We'll try to blur we're, it out. We're at this point of the show. There's not too many listeners hanging on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're gone by now. But this week's Just a Tip does have to do with ego. It's from Ryan Holiday, and it's three things on what to do about an ego. And they're really short, really sweet. Um, number one, um, so three tips from Ryan Holiday on what to do about ego. Number one is do something. Don't try to be somebody. So focus on what you can do and the impact that you can have as opposed to living in this persona. Number two, focus on effort and not outcomes. Dr. Jason Sell talk about that, right? You can set product goals, but focus on the process. Focus on the day-to-day -day activity and how much effort you're actually putting in. And the third one is <clears throat> make other people successful. You know, I think that's a really good way to get rid of any type of toxic ego that you have. If you focus on other people and, and trying to build them up. So that is just the tip. That was cool. a nice short and sweet tip. <laughs> short and sweet. So uh, before we close out, we're going to go with the OnlyFans inquiry. Brad, what do we got? So this one's from Connor, who's actually going to be meeting with us here in a little bit for when Summer Smash happens on at First Forum, uh, one of our newest sponsors. But um, his question was... <laughs> Thanks to DJ. <laughs> <laughs> how, how do you come up with content and ideas for the podcast and social media posts? I try to spend time thinking about stuff to get ideas, but nothing ever comes to me. Then I'll see another post from someone and it'll spark an, an idea, but then I feel like a fraud stealing what they posted and saying it my own way. Um, and I think on my end, for, for as far as content goes, I mean, I think if you look at any <clears throat> personal professional development content out there, it's all the same. Right. Everybody's <laughs> copying off of somebody. It's just being rebranded into their own, their own deal. I mean, we we see that with Ben Newman and Jason Selk, right? You know, two people <clears throat> that we had on the on the show. You know, Jason was Ben's coach, and you know, he mirrors a lot of the stuff that Jason taught him. And Jason, well, yeah. and Jason, you said in his book, mirrors a lot of the stuff from the Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. Yeah, and the one thing by uh, Gary Keller. Yep. I mean, and, so. and the more books you read, the more you'll see these similarities. And I've actually thought about coming up with like a 10 commandments of self-development with it, just because you see the same shit so many different times that if you read a hundred books, you could probably pull 10 or 15 consistencies out of all those books. And now you have a, a foundation of, of what to talk about. And, and, and to his first question um, around, you know, I want to be inspired to, to figure out some content. I mean, that's just a day-to-day -day life thing. Like something happens, um, you have a thought about it. Um, how could it get better? And then you kind of post the content around, you know, your solution uh, to problems. And I think that's that's a way to and develop some content. As far as our little group goes, I think Dan is actually probably the guy who comes up with uh, episode ideas the most often, personally. Yeah. I think I, he's always like well, taking usually a shit, thinking from, like, about something. Matt and, pisses me off and like, Fuck, I got yeah. to talk about yeah. his fucking ego. Ego's been on Dan's. <laughs> ever since I started 75 hard, ego's been on Dan's mind for me. So, uh, no, it's not that. I, I, I don't know why. Hour, break I don't know why I wanted, I wanted to do that one because Jason Selk and, and Ben Newman are both, yeah. both, you know, they talk about it a little bit, but not. They're not, they're not talking about ego, but a lot of the stuff they say has to do with right. checking your ego and, and getting better. So No, I get it. And so uh, Brad is going to be way more versed in talking about the actual content of like social media. Cause, is that what he's talking about or just uh, for, the, for the actual show? Uh, I think our show, maybe his own show okay. or something like that. Yeah, gotcha. So. so yeah, I, just to piggyback off what Brad said, there's no 
original ideas anymore. You know, I everybody's taking something. I think the key to that would be if it's a podcast, talk about what's relevant to you. Yeah. Because I don't think we would be a good podcast. I don't think we'd be, you know, Not top, top one percent. Top one percenter. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think we'd be anywhere near top one percenter if we literally just like took every influencer's topic and then just talked about what they said round table, right? Yeah. Making it your own is what kind of inspires you to come up with your own ideas and kind of mix and match some of these self-development topics. Yeah. And then consistency, right? Like the more you put and time, right? Yeah. Like we It takes put, so much time. We put time into reading articles, listening to podcasts, reading books, like bouncing ideas off of each other, um, where it just starts to flow. And honestly, it's like we still have some buttoning up to do, a ton of buttoning up to do. Um, but this is episode 39. Yeah. Right. Well, technically, we, if you count the book club, we've been doing this for over a year. So, over 60 episodes, probably. So, it's consistency, um, it's time, it's effort. And I think it's don't be afraid to take someone else's idea. Just make sure you can apply it to whatever it is that you're doing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's, and that's another thing is, is it's good that there's all these different people putting out content that essentially say the same thing because different deliveries resonate different with for different people, right? So I might click better with how Andy Frisella delivers the same message that Ed Milet might say in a different way mm -hmm. or vice versa. Or Ryan Holiday says it this way and Tom Bilyeu says it that way. Yeah. But the way Ryan said it, man, it, it really clicked for him. You know what I mean? And right. so that's why I think it's good that this happens. And whenever we're developing content, I think it, I think our podcast is really cool because we get four perspectives on every topic that we do. And because of that, one of us, hopefully, and that's the goal of the whole podcast is to to resonate with listeners. Hopefully, one of our stories with whatever topic it is resonates with somebody. And so, you know, because it's all different. We all see it a little bit different. Yes. And, and think about books too. Whenever you read a book, there's a lot of times where you take just one thing from a book that you read. You might read 250 pages of something and there might be just one thing in that book that changes your life. You don't need to, I mean, you we consume a lot of content. Like you said, you get four different perspectives on all this stuff. If you can just take one thing away from every single podcast that you listen to, every book that you read, then you're getting better. Yeah. yeah. And 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 not to, I mean, fuck, we really answered this question. But for, <laughs> for me is, you know, if I'm reading a book, and I've said this before, I don't, sometimes I, I don't read the whole book partly because I'm lazy, but also because as soon as I get a fucking nugget out of a book or out of a piece of content, I don't need to go out and listen to more podcasts on that or read more of that book. I need to apply that nugget immediately. And if you're reading a book and that nugget hits you and you'll know, you'll know like, oh my God, this, this is what I need to do. And now you can make a post on whatever that nugget was yeah. and, and take that and run with it. Yeah, application's key. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So I think that's a good uh, sticking point. We appreciate you guys listening. Uh, if you have questions or you have an OnlyFans inquiry, hit us on Instagram. Probably the best part to, or the best way to do that. And then uh, next week, we will have on Dr. Alan Reed, who is co-author of Relentless Solution Focus, who I'm super pumped about because now I'm actually almost through the book. So I'm going to have a lot of questions there. So um, yeah, we appreciate you guys listening and making us one percenters. Yeah. yeah, and anybody out there, if you guys have have somebody you want to see us have on, reach out, let us know for sure, because we're booking up guests left and right right now. So yep. we want to get who you want. Yeah, and throw us a review too. Yeah, 100%. Like, smash that like button. Reviews. Subscribes. I'd rather get a review. Reviews are big. Yeah. For we us. just want to know, we just wanna know how we're doing. <laughs> yes. Five stars and, and a review. Yeah, yeah. And it blows my ego. And roast Matt and his ego. So that's nice a little tip. Yeah, I, I feel like we have some good shit and, <laughs> and, and people seem an to enjoy it. And so if you guys could just share it with a friend, you know. Okay. Sharing's caring. Now we're coming off a, a little bit desperate, guys. <laughs> Sharing's caring. We're really not, hey. <laughs> we're trying to go a Rich, hey, Rich we want, cut that. Hey, we that doesn't, that's we not coming off the one percenters. We, Rich, we need all they that. Want to get in, they want to get in on the ground floor before we blow up. <laughs> exactly. All right. Thanks, guys. Deuces. Later. Later.